So here's the finished product right here. This is kind of where we're going. Here's another one that hasn't been cut yet. Here's a beautiful one with square corners or hexagonal corners and a blood groove. Really pretty layout. Hey, Woodcutters, Topsaw here. Today I'm gonna to go over how to run a cutting board on the CNC. Really step one is figuring out what tool you're gonna to use. So I'm gonna use this Techno CNC. So I figure out the tool. Next thing I do is figure out what cutter I'm using. This is a quarter inch flat end mill. So I'm gonna stick with that actual router bit. And then the third step is figuring out your stock. Pick your materials, make sure they're surfaced on both edges, glue them up, clamp them up, wipe off the excess glue, let it dry overnight, and then scrape all of the excess glue off. Over to the plane or plane it down. Here it is already surfaced out. You can see there's some marks in here. That's gonna come out with the sander, but it's a flat plane this way and a flat plane on the back. Now I'm playing on the front and the back. This side and this side are parallel and surface. I leave these long tabs on to fixture it down on the CNC. So I'm surfaced on one, two, three, four. I want to draw the perpendicular to those sides. And the key here is that I leave enough wood so I could fixture it down. So maybe even a little bit bigger than that. I'll draw this line. Do it on the opposite side. This side I have longer tabs, so I could probably go a little bit further this way. Once I have those perpendiculars on there, I'm gonna use a straight edge to find my center. So I can go corner to corner. So there's the center of the board. So I have my verticals drawn. That's gonna be my build window. I'm gonna measure the maximum size board I could have. And that's 13 and three quarters in X. So I'm gonna write 13 and three quarters. In Y, I got 12 and a half. And then I'm gonna also do Z, which is my thickness. Use my dial calipers, make sure it's zeroed. Gently open it up, 0.774. I'm gonna write that down. So I have X, Y, and Z, the maximum dimensions I could have. I'm gonna actually make my cutting board smaller than that, but this is my stock setup. Once all of that is done, then I go to the computer and get started. First thing I do is I open up Mastercam Design X7. I'm gonna go pretty slow through this. So a couple of small clicks here make a big difference. Make sure you get all, all of these clicks right. Pause the video when you need to do the step and then go back and check it. Rewind the video if you need to. So in front of me, I have my pencil, I have my cutting board with me, and I have the dimensions written down there, X, Y, and Z. So that should really be in front of you or transferred to a piece of paper. In Mastercam X7, just like in the shop, first thing I did was pick my machine. So right here, I'm gonna pick the machine I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a wood router. It's a Techno Servo RMD7. And I click that. That pulls up my property manager on the left here. Then under that, just like I did in the shop, I pick my tool first and then my stock. I'm gonna to go to my stock setup. That stock setup is right here. It should pop up. And then off of my board, I'm gonna enter those dimensions in there. So in X, it's 13.75. In Y, going vertically, it's 12.5. And then my Z is 0.774. A couple of things I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure my top of stock is right here on the top, not the bottom. And it's in the center of the board. So I have to really set that. And then I'm gonna go over here to hit display. And that's gonna show my stock on my screen. So I'm all done there. F9 on my keyboard will give me my Cartesian coordinates. So I'm all done there. Now I'm gonna start creating geometry. So I'm gonna to go to create. I'm gonna first create a rectangle. It's prompting me right here, select where you want it to go. I click right there in the origin and I can see which way I draw it is in whatever quadrant, but that's the center of my stock. So I want my artwork or my geometry to be centered there. This little plus here is anchored to center and now it's gonna go symmetrically over the origin. My wood is 13 and three quarters. 
So I'm going to actually make my board say 13, just kind of inside the build window. Better to make it too small than too big. So you can maybe go 13 or 13 and a quarter, but at least a half inch under the build window. So there's my X direction. Right here is my Y. My stock is 12 and a half. So I'm going to make this 12. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to hit a green check mark to say I'm done the operation. This little snowflake right here is fit screen. And then there's my rectangle. So that red dotted line is my stock. That green line is my actual board that I'm cutting out. That'll allow the bit, the bit or the router bit to go around the outside and cut through wood. Next thing I'm gonna do is this button right here, this is called a fillet. I'm gonna fillet my corners and I can set that radius here. Let's say I set it at one. I'm gonna click on this side and this side and there's a one inch fillet. If I'm all done, I'll hit the green check mark or if I wanna fillet all the corners Right now I could do that. So I'm going to click one side, the other, fill it goes in. I could change my radius. I'm going to fill it these sides. I'm done the filleting operation. So I hit the green check mark. All right. Next thing I want to do is create a blood groove inside by an inch. I have the existing geometry. I'm going to manipulate it. So I do that under X form. So I'm going to offset a contour. This right here is asking me, how do you want to select it? So I'm going to select it with the chain. So I'm going to just click on there, green check mark, and it offset it inside. This is a pop-up window right here. It offset it a half inch. Let's say I offset it one inch instead, and it's going to copy it in. If I wanted to reverse the direction, I could do that here, but it's on the inside. And that looks good. So I'm done that operation. I'm going to hit the green check mark. And then this button up here is clear colors. Oh, because I did that, it offset inside and outside. But that's good. I'm just going to highlight these and delete it. Another good button to know is the escape button. If you're halfway through an operation, you don't want to do it, you could hit escape. My blood groove, that contour offset on the inside, is right there. It squared the corners up because that fillet can go down in size. So if I want these corners to match these corners, I go back up here to fill it. Again, it's a one inch radius. So I'll hold the previous setting. And I'm going to fill it all these corners. Okay. So now that I have all my geometry done, I like the way it looks. Now I'm going to start doing my tool pathing. So when I do this tool pathing, I really have to do some thinking and going slow here. First decision is order of operations. You want to cut the board out first and then the blood groove. If you do it that way, it's going to pop up off of the tabletop and you won't be able to cut the groove out. So the order of operations has to be the blood groove first and then cutting the board out. So I'm going to go up here to tool path. It's going to be a contour. That's the way I'm going to select it. It's going to pull up this property name here. I'm cutting the blood groove out, so I'll call it that. And then I'm going to select it with the chain. I'm going to hit close to this end point. And I got to remember this is going counterclockwise. So I'm going to hit OK. That's going to bring up my tool path here. And this is what I'm doing. So I'm going to work my way down this left hand column. So it's a contour. I'm going to click on tool. I have to go down to my tool library, find my tool. This is a quarter inch straight bit. So I'm going to click on that, hit OK. And then right here, I have to set the feed rate. I'm going to set it at 100. And my plunge rate at half of that, 50. Blue is going to hold that setting. And green is going to close out the window. So I don't want to do that. Holder, no changes there. Cut parameters. For this blood groove, I'm actually going to turn it off. And what that means under that compensation type is that bit is traveling down the center line. Again, I'll hold that setting with the blue. Depth of cut is how deep it'll go on a single pass. I'm only going to do this as a safety. But the rule of thumb here is 0.25, less than the diameter of the cutter. But I'm only going to go down to 15, so I'm not going to use that. Again, it's just a safety. 
lead in lead out is a, a is a system so that you cut laterally but if i cut laterally here it's going to mark up my board so i'm going to turn that off breakthrough nothing multi passes nothing tabs nothing and then linking parameters these are all absolute because i call the top of stock zero my depth of that blood groove has to be negative. So it's going to be negative 0.15. And I'm all done that tool path. But there's a tool path on the left. I'm going to do one more tool path as a contour. This is going to be the cutout. Chain is selected. That's good. I'm going to click on the, this side of the line. It is going counterclockwise. Then it comes up here. Again, my tool is a quarter inch straight bit. It goes back to these default, so I have to reset these at 150. Hold that setting. I'm going to work my way down here. I'm going to turn my compensation type back on. I'm going counterclockwise. So as that bit travels this way, the cutter's on the inside of it, making my board too small. So I'm going to put it, the compensation type to right. If I'm going counterclockwise, the cutter's on the right, it's outside the board. Very important idea there. Depth of cut, this is important that it's set because my board's three quarters of an inch thick. If I try and do that in a single pass, it's gonna break the cutter. So lessen the diameter of the bit 0.25. Lead in, lead out, I'll keep that off. Breakthrough, multi-passes, tabs. Tabs is a way to fixture it down. So I am gonna select tabs. I'm going to make them automatic and I'm going to tab my whole part. I could actually make this tab thickness a little bit bigger, like 40 thousandths of an inch, and that'll leave them on there a little, long, a little longer. Hold those settings. Again, I'm going to go to linking parameters. These are all absolute. The only one I'm changing is my depth. Again, my top of stock is zero, so I'm going down into it. So this is going to be a negative value. It's going to be the negative thickness of the board that I measured with the dial caliper. So that's right here. I wrote it down 0.774 to 0.774. I'm going to hit the green check mark. And then there's my tool path. This arrow is saying it's cutters on the outside of the line. This arrow is saying the direction of travel. That all looks good to me. Only this one is selected here. I want to select both my tool paths by hitting this right there. And then I could verify it. This little block right here is verify. I'm going to verify it uh, through an animation. I'm going to watch in the isometric view. I could slow this down a little bit. And here are the things I'm checking. The blood groove gets cut first in a single pass. The outside of the board gets cut with the cutter on the outside of the line, and it does it in three passes. This little bar down here are my two different tool paths. Yellow is the blood groove. Purple is the actual cutout. So I'm going to hit play. Blood groove, good. One, two, three, oh, four. It cut it in four because it was 0.774, right? 0.75 would be three passes of 0.25. So that looks great. I like the way that looks. If I want to keep my master cam file, I go file, save as, and I save it in my student folder or in my own personal master cam uh, flash drive. That's going to be an MCX file, but that is not what gets read out in the shop. What gets read in the shop is an NC file, numeric code file. So for me to turn this, all this vector information into a numeric code file, I go to G1, that's called a post. And it's going to convert all of this vector information into Cartesian coordinates. So I'm going to hit G1. That's going to post it. It's asking me where to post it. you got to post it on a flash drive. Um, and it needs to be an NC file. So it is. I'm going to hit that. I'm actually just going to do it on my desktop here. And now this is a conversion of all this vector information into numeric code. That's kind of the power of these CAD CAM softwares is the ability to convert into numeric code. So here's my code that's on the flash drive. Again, this is an NC file, and these are the commands. So, you know, this is saying inches, speed, go in the Z direction at 0.25 above the board, then go down to 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16,
And then right here, this first line of code is in the Z direction, plunge in negative 0.15, that's the depth of my blood groove, at a feed rate of 50, because I set that plunge half of my feed rate, right? So that's the plunge rate, that's the depth. Then travel in the X direction, negative 4.6 at a feed rate of 100. So this is all the code in there to run the file. It's only 75 lines of code. You take that flash drive out into the shop and then you run your part. I don't think I'll do that in this video. I'll just do a quick run on the video and, and talk you through that. Cutting board is fixtured down with plastic nails. Uh, I load the file onto the computer in the shop. It is off of the flash drive because there's no internet. It is an NC file. I have to move my bit to the top center of the board and I put the bit exactly in the center top of that board and very important, I zero the router out. Safety has to be job number one. Make sure you have your glasses on. Don't do any of this unless I'm there working with you through the setup and run on the CNC router. You see that sawdust buildup? That's from a climb cut instead of a conventional cut. Let's get to work.